Hello and welcome to Forging Ahead, the fifth episode. I am Aviv Manoach and this is a show about tabletop role-playing games where I discuss the shenanigan of my home group and prepare for their next adventure. Welcome listeners to this new episode. Uh, this week we are not filming and recording live as uh, we usually do because I have all kind of life stuff that got in the way and so I kind of scrambled to actually record this episode and upload it today so you can listen but usually you can catch me live on the Twitch channel which is twitch.tv slash isle.me one word um, otherwise I am these those episodes are um, Otherwise, you can listen to this episode on the on the shoulders of dwarf feed on dwarfcast.net, uh, as you may are doing right now. In this show, I am talking about what happened in my home game, which is a game of teenage superheroes in a world that just uh, learned about the very existing of superpowers about ten years ago. We are using masks and new generation uh, system, rule set, with a few tweaks here and there. Uh, I highly recommend at least uh, listening to the previous episodes so you are caught up to what is going on right now. Uh, on each episode I, uh, I talk about what happened in the last session or a couple of sessions if there was a, a skip. Uh, um, over uh, several sessions uh, then I discuss what I'm thinking about doing uh, moving forward uh, idea, general ideas and concept and uh, storylines I want to introduce and then um, we talk about the very next session which usually happen on Fridays and that's it this is all happened happening over the course of about 30 minutes so let's us begin. Previously on Collecting Dust, which is the name of our campaign. Uh, it was Saturday after a very, a very heavy, a very intense Friday, which had a lot of things happen in it. And now on Sunday, uh, on Saturday, sorry, um, the group, the team split up, each went uh, their own way to do their own thing. Um, the, in the ending of the previous session before that, Tom has their dad about Tom is the Flying Fist, sorry, it's her real name, uh, not, not superhero name. She was speaking with her dad about her brother, uh, which, he, which was recruited to the organization Seraph, which is an international organization uh, in charge of controlling the appearance of superpowers um, around the world. Something like S.H.I.E.L.D. although less, I don't know, less policy? More... I, I, I can't describe it. We... it's more... it's more... Um, um, it's... think about it as a more militant a form of shield they are less spy less less uh, investigative more we are going to um, use a lot of force in order to stop people from doing bad things with, uh, to the world with superpowers so Arel uh, the flying fist brother is a powerful uh, aeromancer and uh, he was taken by Seraph about a year ago. Uh, Tom knew basically nothing of what happened beside those facts and suddenly she hears uh, he may be um, a villain called Typhoon that he is um, 
threatening the lives of some of their friends. So she starts uh, searching for this typhoon character and she goes online for on several websites. We have we have already established that there is a kind of central website in the in our campaign called the Wonder Wiki, which is a Wikipedia-like uh, website where people upload information about known um, superpowered people, wonders. But there are also other kind of website, a more conspiracy-like website, which Tom goes on and finds, sorry, finds a site called Wonder Watch uh, that um, has an information about Typhoon. They say that he was seen a couple of times near several uh, warehouses in the industrial part of the city. So this is the new information for her and she uh, text the team and ask them to accompany her to in the evening to uh, this industrial part of town to look for him. Meanwhile, uh, Oron is uh, looking for information about the tablet of Anat. Uh, this is a kind of artifact that uh, the team heard about a couple of times last week. They know that several people are searching for the fragments of this tablet and the team doesn't know anything about it besides the fact that it's related in some way to canine, Canaanite mythology uh, in the area. So he goes online, he opens Wiki Wikipedia, he reads about uh, uh, the Baal cycle, which is the story related to the Tablet of Anat. And if you want to read the real life mythology related to this, you can click on the link in the show notes and uh, follow it to Wikipedia and read about the story of Baal and Anat, which I'm using as a basis for this um, storyline in the campaign. And since some of what happened, what's happening in the campaign uh, is mirrored with on uh, real life um, events and occurrences, the character have Wikipedia, they, they can read anything we can read, so I just took this link and gave um, uh, Oron the information, which was really easy. And like, if, if, if we have the same thing in a fantasy setting, the GM needs to write the information down and explain the characters everything. But here, in this modern, close to real life setting, I, just, I can just give the information without having to write everything myself, which is nice. A uh, Seabreeze, which is our outsider, went to the local reservoir. Now, as part of the tweaks to the system, one of the things we added to in this campaign is the concept of key location and key figures. That means that each character have a, a location in the city that is related to their playbook. In the case of the outsider, this location is the uh, place in the world that connects her to her home world. Uh, Seabreeze's home world is a, a virtual world. I don't remember uh, the name that the player gave uh, the world at the moment, but um, it's, it's supposed to be a kind of virtual world that is in reality exist in the real world computer system, but the character Sibiris doesn't know that. The, she, 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 she doesn't understand uh, the real world, how it works. She doesn't understand the, how her reality um, <clears throat> connects in relation to the real world. So that is part of, of the storyline uh, I'm introducing uh, to this character the, um, the concept of things from the virtual world are starting to appear in the real world and it's, it's very weird all, all of this. So she goes to the reservoir, she goes in, she swims in the water and starting <clears throat> to see vision of things from her, her home world. She doesn't know if those vision are real or if they are memories or if they are just illusions 
or her imagination, but these are all sort of flashes that goes in her head. And one of the things she sees is a group of people, um, supposedly children, although she, she doesn't know for sure, using the equipment from her home, but appearing in the real world. This is uh, uh, the first clue to the existence of the video kids um, that we talked about in previous episodes. Uh, now, uh, Amrafel, as his real identity as Ami, helps uh, Alex's family uh, to clean and fix her uh, house after the attack um, in, the, in the previous day, as we discussed before. Um, Amrafel is the only one from the group that the team doesn't know his real identity. Uh, he, he very, he's very into the concept of the, of the Yanus, so he keeps his superhero and his real life identity is totally separate from one another so the team doesn't know um, anything about him at school uh, they, do, they don't know that Alex is his friend they don't know that, um, they are not aware of the connection between them they don't know anything like that um, the player over the course of the last couple of sessions has started to consider Telling the group his real identity, but he's not there yet. I I, I like this whole story arc very much, and uh, not only because it's it it's entirely player driven. I, I I'm not doing anything to expose his secret identity at the moment. It didn't it didn't ca- came up, but um, it's 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 a <clears throat> this player specifically has a very good. A grasp of how to build their own uh, character arc and I like it very much <coughs> sorry so everyone does their own thing Tom's call and tell them about the warehouse and ask them to accompany her to the industrial zone uh, to look for typhoon they, they agree and meet there in the evening uh, needless to say, the place is mostly deserted because it's Saturday evening, and so no one is in, no one is at the industrial area. But um, they are going over the place and looking for people. And uh, Oron and Am- Amrafel both are using the powers to try to uh, detect uh, suspicious people. Oron with his telepathy, and Amrafel with his heightened senses. And finally, they come upon a group of people uh, in one of the uh, factory yards and they see them doing something shady. And uh, also, Seabreeze has, has the ability f- to fly. So she kind of hover uh, above the group and look uh, into the yard. And finally, they see some blinking light that looks like a bomb and the team just charge in to start the fight. And that's where we stopped. <clears throat> okay, so this is that's what happened in the last session. And um, although I didn't mean for it to happen this this uh, quickly, this is the part of the um, terrorist group uh, story arc storyline. Uh, that uh, we discussed in the last episode, Uh, this is one attack of a coordinated attack across the entire city. Uh, There are going to be between three to five, I haven't decided yet, location that um, the the terrorists have planted bombs that went off at the same time or are going to um, go off at the same time. And the team are going to fight in this location and after which they are going to hear about the other attacks and about um, a couple of adult heroes that were involved in those uh, incidents. Now, the terrorists have targeted locations that are supposed to be abandoned or empty because they are trying to minimize civilian casualties. Their goal is to make a point, not to kill people, but it 
it didn't um, it didn't went as well as they uh, wanted it to because in two other location they they were um, involved with other heroes. The first location is going to be with Red Owl. Red Owl is a character that the players have heard about before they actually met him in the Titania Fight Club and he is supposed to be a, a costumed hero without any superpowers that is newly active in the last about si six months in both this city and other cities and they are going to hear about him being injured in this in one of the uh, attack locations. Uh, we know, the, as the GM and the listeners to this uh, GM prep session, that Red Owl is actually the, the superhero uh, power star uh, which the team fought before and is, he, he went uh, underground and now using the uh, identity of Red Owl in order to keep, uh, um, keep his activities secret because he is uh, certain that there is some form of government conspiracy to um, take various heroes uh, from the streets and use them for, for some reason or another. So he, he um, when the campaign began, he took a bunch of people in a radio station hostage, the team stopped him and then he disappeared. And now he is using the Red Owl alias and he is going to be injured in the terrorist attack. The other uh, adult hero that the team is going to hear about is called Raziel. Raziel is a new character, he, it's the first time the team is going to hear about him and he is a very... Um, how do you say it? Sorry, I forgot the word I wanted to use. <laughs> A very, let's see, is uh, a veteran hero, uh, 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 an, an, um, an older hero, but not because of his age, because he, he used to be active and now he isn't. He, he, he actually was, he fought in the War of Might. The War of Might was the uh, war 10 years ago that the all or major uh, people with superpowers fought and it's the reason that they were discovered to the public. So he fought in the, uh, Raziel fought in the War of Might. He, at the end of the war, he was one of the wonders that helped found Seraph and was active for about two years after, um, after the war ended. Uh, and then he vanished and uh, was thought to be dead. So. Raziel appearing now, it's, it's an accident. He didn't mean to resurface. He was near one of the attack and tried to stop them and happened. Uh, what happened is that a, a news crew happened to film him and uh, reveal his existence to the world. So this is a new character. The team uh, in, in the story, he probably heard about Raziel, or at least they could easily uh, look him up online and see who it is. And he will go, <clears throat> he's going to play a more a major uh, role later. Uh, now it's just the, the introduction to this character. Now the reason I want to introduce more adult heroes to the story is a couple of things. One, I want the players to feel like there is more to the world around them. Right now, almost anything that happened in our campaign was either about the team itself or stuff that was on their level. More at the moment, it's at the moment, despite the fact that the team has. Um, some very powerful superpowers they are active on a street level they uh, they stop 
people that um, commit crimes. Um, I, I keep forgetting words today. It's, it's, it's kind of annoying, but we, we will get there. Um, Okay, never mind. <laughs> they are involved with very low level uh, people. Um, they were um, they they found a couple of other uh, wonders that fought in the Fight Club. They met a couple of other teenagers. Nothing major. All of all of the things that happened until now in the campaign were um, a bit low powered and. On, on one hand, I think it's too early to elevate the team themselves to a more higher level of power, but I, I, I do want them to feel like the world around them have a, a higher power level. So this is one of the reasons I'm introducing those adult power, uh, heroes, because I want them to feel like things are happening around them. And the other um, the other reason is uh, R. Uh, first of all, Red Owl is one of the characters that was previously introduced, and we want to uh, him to have a more prominent part of the story because he's power star and is related to the storyline. So I'm going to uh, bring him in and. The other one is Raziel, and, and what I'm imagining for Raziel, not specifically as, as a character, but more as a concept, is that over the course of the campaign, as we discussed in the last episode, the, the situation in the city is going to uh, escalate and intensify, and they want to bring more and more attention from the outside world to this specific city because this is a city we are playing in and this is the city our heroes are in. Are in. So while this is a, um, generally um, a somewhat um, small city, we are talking about 45,000 people all in all which means uh, about 400 or maybe 350 uh, wonders or active uh, superheroes slash villain. This is the closest city to the major um, superpowered location in the world, which is the Fisher and the superpowered prison, the Boar. So because the city is in such an important location, during the course of the campaign, more and more attention is going to um, be focused on this city from the outside world. We are going to have Seraph intervene at some point. We are going to have um, heroes and villains from other uh, countries and other cities come here. We are going to have international companies and um, and operations start, um, start uh, um, being active in the city. And so on. So this is the first, um, first incident or first clue uh, to show the team, the players, that there are major forces that are operating out, uh, in the city and outside the city. And their team, while the story focused on them, their, their team is just in the center, but just the... the, the um, the concentrated center of a much larger world. So this is the rationalization behind, behind the, so that is the rationalization behind um, introducing those characters at this, this uh, moment. Okay, so what we are going to have uh, <laughs> We are going to discuss uh, the next session. The next session is going to be a battle. Finally, finally, we are going to see some action. Ten sessions without a major fight. I don't know how I ran a superhero campaign with this long of uh, 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 
the that um, that that it took me this long to put in another uh, ma uh, uh, another major battle um, in at the end of the previous uh, session we used the enter battle as a team move for the first time in, in the entire campaign um, I'm still considering rather to have the enemy they encounter be normal people or, um, or uh, people with powers, how exactly to handle it. But I'm going to let my players do their thing and according to what will happen uh, in the session to, to, decide, to decide what is going to happen. Um, it's one of the things I love about Powered by the Apocalypse uh, games that I sometimes come to the session myself as a GM with very little or no prep at all and I, I let the players and the game uh, show me um, what is going to happen and I find out together with them. I, I love that about uh, about this, those games very much. <clears throat> After this, this fight, I'm sure that the players will try and find out why it happened and what happened and they are going to learn from the media about the other attacks in the city and also the, uh, uh, the announcement from the terrorists about their motivations and goals. They are going to find uh, to learn they're going to learn that the terrorists attack the city because they're trying to get their friends released from prison and um, they're also of course going to hear about what happened to Red Owl and what happened uh, with Raziel and learn, learn about Raziel for the first time etc. Um, next day on, uh, on Sunday we are going to go back to what we planned before. Oron is going to meet the military investigator and the team is going to hear about the video kids or rather the robberies at school. And the city is going to be attacked by the new supervillain we discussed that uh, is trying to get revenge about the military officer that recruited him. I may push this attack back uh, because of everything happening in the, in the city, maybe the super villain is n doesn't want to attack immediately after such a major incident. Uh, I, I need to think about it. I, I, I also need to actually write the guy or, or the, the girl, whatever, uh, because I, I, at the moment I don't know anything about them. I, I know that they are a major super villain with very destructive powers that is going to fly around the city and do a lot of damage in order to draw out this military officer but I don't have a name, I don't have powers, I don't have anything. I do have a name, uh, the, I, I do have a list of um, sample supervillains from the, the actual Wonders book that we wrote so maybe I will take one of them and use it, we will see. Okay, that's, that's it for now, that's it for this episode. Um, I'm very excited to run this battle. This is going to be very interesting because the only time we actually had a, a, a major combat was on the first session and we it, it was a very different situation. This is the first time in this campaign that we are going to have an actual superhero comic book fight and I'm excited to see how it goes. That's our show for today. The next episode we'll catch up on what happened with the group and uh, discuss how to proceed. In the meantime, you can catch me on Twitter uh, at Icel. Check uh, more uh, about my games on Vanor Games to Amaze Facebook page and join our uh, community on the Shoulders of Dwarf on Facebook. Uh, like always, I very appreciate uh, feedback. If you have any suggestion or... Um, 
comments about what we talked about, about how to improve the podcast or my game, I'm very happy to hear about it. You can comment on the episode. You can send me a tweet or private message, whatever you want. Thank you very much for listening and we will, um, we will uh, meet again or uh, listen again next time. Goodbye.